The Tour de France is the world's biggest sporting event, a race originally built around history and culture, but gradually it has become more and more about science and data. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to win the Tour de France using the power of science and maths. The Tour de France is the most prestigious of all Grand Tours. Riders and teams prepare as well as they possibly can for this key part of their race season. And we've all heard of marginal gains. General classification or GC riders who pursue the overall win will plan their entire year to arrive at the Tour in exactly the right physical condition. Gone are the days of just training hard, doing long miles in the hopes of beating your competition, because everything is about science. I'm going to break down how to win the Tour de France into two areas. The main focus being the ideal physiology of a GC or general classification rider. And then I'm also going to look at the bike. First, we need to look at what it is the GC riders are trying to achieve at the race. They're trying to ride the accumulative distance of all of the stages in the least time possible. They don't need to finish first every day, but they need to ensure they do not lose any significant time against their GC rivals. When I say it that way, it seems a fairly simple principle. It only becomes complicated when we start to break down the demands of the overall race and look at the different types of stages to assess what type of rider will do the best. For hilly or mountain stages, a rider's watts per kilograms or power to weight is the most important. This is simply the number of watts of power a rider can sustain per kilogram of body weight. And typically, when we compare the stats of different riders, we're looking at their threshold power, which is measured over one hour. It's the mountain stages when we most often see significant time gaps between GC riders due to the demands of the terrain and the fact that aerodynamics and drafting have less of an impact when cycling uphill. Riders with some of the best watts per kilogram numbers tend to weigh around 60 kilograms or less and are slightly smaller in height than your average person. Anything over 6 watts per kilogram is considered to be world class. On the flat or sprint stages, we typically see riders who produce huge power outputs over a very short period of time who win sometimes in excess of 2,000 watts. However, their watts per kilogram outputs are not as impressive because those fast twitch muscle fibers are particularly bulky and heavy. Just look at a climber's legs next to a sprinter's and you'll see exactly what I mean. Then finally, we have the individual time trial stages. These are generally on flatter terrains and all about pure speed. They involve no team tactics and as a general rule, the rider with the best watts per CDA tends to win. CDA stands for coefficient of drag times the frontal area. And a lower CDA means you're more aerodynamic and is why we see riders using super aero kit and equipment. In all but hilly time trials, the rider's weight and height doesn't really have a negative impact on their speed. Think of Filippo Ganna, who's about 85 kilograms. Quite simply, bigger or taller riders tend to produce far more power and as such can ride significantly faster on flatter terrains. Now we know what the demands of the different types of stages are, we need to calculate what proportion they'll feature in the Tour de France route. In 2021, we have 21 stages made up of nine sprint stages, six mountain stages, five hilly stages, and two time trials. In sprint stages, there tends to be none or very little time difference between GC riders. So that leaves 50%, the majority of the race, as hilly or mountainous terrain. And those are the days when riders who produce the best watts per kilo are likely to win and also gain time on their GC rivals. At this point, you might be thinking, you know how to win the Tour de France. Just pick the rider with the best watts per kilo ability and it's job done. No, 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 no. It's far from that simple because you've yet to factor in the two time trial stages where you can guarantee there'll be a time difference between the GC riders. The rider with the best watts per kilograms will not be the best time trialist unless, of course, that time trial is going uphill. Wow, this is getting particularly complicated as we go. Historically, the percentage that time trial races feature in the Tour de France has gradually reduced, 
and in more recent years varies between two to three stages. This year it's just two. You can see this trend on the chart, the yellow is the Tour de France, but also it shows the Giro and the Vuelta. Right then, on to the key part. With all of this information in mind, we now have our requirements for the GC rider. So according to my calculations, the most effective split of a rider's physiological strength should go 85% towards watts per kilos and 15% towards watts per CDA to best meet the demands of the Tour de France. In the simplest possible terms, it's about finding the perfect balance between being as light as possible to climb as fast as possible, yet remain big and strong enough to produce enough power to beat your GC rivals in the time trial stages, and then to carefully balance this to mimic the exact route of each year's Tour de France to beat your competitors. And that's even before factoring. Riders, GC riders, support staff, domestiques, race tactics, crashes, time bonuses for the stage winners. Oh, my head hurts already. But what does that mean in terms of a rider's actual body shape and size? So looking back over the last 10 Tour de France winners, there's an average weight of 67.1 kilograms, an average height of 182.2 centimeters, which would indicate that that's the optimum balance of a rider's weight relative to their height. Even going as far back as 1978, there have only been four riders to win the Tour that were under 174 centimetres tall, and only one rider over 186 centimetres. So unless you're within that perfect 12 centimetre range, I'm sorry to say this, but your chances of winning the Tour de France are much, much slimmer. But how about the bike then? Because a long time ago, a certain rider wrote an actual book titled Is Not About The Bike, but I disagree. The bike plays a key part in winning the Tour de France, and we can work out what's the best bike to have. In fact, it's a relatively simple process of balancing aerodynamics and weight relative to the demands of the race, much similar to how we determined the physiology, and of course adhering to the UCI bike regulations. As a GC rider, the aim is to have the most aerodynamically optimised bike that weighs as close to the UCI weight limit as possible. However, the reality is a little bit different to that because of things like bike sizes, team sponsors, and that's before we even factor in rolling resistance, frame stiffness, strength, drivetrain efficiency and longevity of components. But the goal is to have an aero bike that is as close to the 6.8 kilogram weight limit as possible. Even with the advances in technology, the historical results and scientific data suggest that up until now, Team Ineos, with their rim brake bikes, have the most optimum setup. That's not me saying rim brake bikes are better or worse than disc brakes, because they both have their pros and cons, but in the aero and weight department, only rim brake bikes tend to come out on top. Oh, that's gonna spark some interest in the comments. But with the advancements in technology and the release of certain new bikes, I have a sneaky feeling this could be the year we finally see Team Ineos make the switch over to disc brakes and potentially we could see a 100% disc brake Pro Benz Peloton. Hope you've enjoyed this video and if so, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section down below how you would go about winning the Tour de France. Don't forget to check out GCN Racing for all things racing, including the Tour de France highlights, and consider subscribing to GCN Tech for all things bike tech related. See ya.